brothers and sisters in Christ, turn in your Bible, your King James Bible for English speaking people. It's God's perfect written word. Remember, this ministry is a Bible believing, God fearing ministry. Okay, it starts with fearing God, then it starts with believing in His perfect written word afterwards. Okay, get your King James Bibles out. Turn to 2 Timothy 2.15. I know a lot of the brethren have this memorized. This is a memory verse, okay? 2 Timothy 2.15 states that study to show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. Why do we study? To hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against thee. Or with all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Both those are in the Proverbs. Um, uh, Psalms. Uh, but study to show thyself approved. You live it. You take God's word, you hide it in your heart, and you live it. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? I've talked the talk a lot, but I want to make a quick video because I want to show the, that the work is done here in the, the new ministry office. And we got everything organized where it's all in the same room. Praise the Lord. And I thank all the brethren for praying, praying for this setup. Uh, but we've talked about debating. Okay? Some people will say, well, debate's not a sin. Some people say, debate is a sin. Okay? Well, here's the thing. You're both right and you're both wrong. This side's half right. This side's half right. You see what we're talking about? Well, let's look at debate in the Bible. Turn to Proverbs 25. First time debate is mentioned is Proverbs 25. This is where a lot of them will go to say, look, Proverbs 25 says we can debate. And it does. But remember we just read there, rightly dividing the word of truth. What's the context of this debate? Okay. 25, let's start in verse 8. Let's start in verse 8. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Verse 9. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Himself. Now I'm going to stop right there for a second. See, a lot of people are saying it's okay to put on these big debates where you got one guy behind a podium over here, and you got one guy behind a podium over here, and you've got a million people out there. Not a million, but, but you've got a huge audience. And you've got this guy's cheerleaders cheering him on. You've got this guy's cheerleaders cheering him on. And hey, it's like a sporting event. Is that what this is talking about? Notice what it says there. When it says, debate thy cause. It says, debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. So in context here, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. There is no audience. There is no big show, drama, trying to get many cl views, clicks, whatever, on, like on YouTube and Rumble and platforms like that. It's not about that. Okay? It's about you going to somebody one-on-one. -on -one and it says, thy neighbor. Okay? Now, in this context, the neighbor here is talking about the Jewish people, but there was also Gentiles that lived among the Jewish people back then. Okay? Himself. And discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine inf infamy turn not away. What is it talking about here? It's talking about when you've got a problem, a worldly problem, with a neighbor, don't start backbiting. Don't start whispering. Don't start grumbling. Uh, look into the issue thoroughly, study the issue that you have a problem with thoroughly to make sure that you're not in the wrong, and then you go to that neighbor and debate thy cause with that neighbor. Why? To iron things out. But it's talking about worldly issues. Uh, uh, where my land starts and your land ends, okay? Your horse keeps coming over to my land and, and messing up my fence or something. If you're debating your cause, that person's wronged you, and you're debating your cause. You're supposed to go talk to the person. See, that's one of the hard things we have today, brothers and sisters, is actually confronting brothers and sisters in Christ and talking to them. You got a problem with a brother in Christ or sister in Christ? Go talk to them. When it's a worldly issue, go talk to them. 
And notice it says himself. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's never a group thing. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. And in this context, I believe it's talking about worldly issues. Okay? Worldly issues. Now, Isaiah 27, 8 says that it uses the word debate. Isaiah 58, 4 uses the word debate. Uh, 27, 8, you don't have to turn here, it says, In measure, when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. And there's more context to it, but it's talking about debating worldly problems. Okay. Behold ye fast for strife. That's Isaiah 58, 4. Behold ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Once again, it's not debating one on one, it's saying and it's, it's future prophecy. Look at today. Debating's become a um, a sport. On high, where everybody can hear you, everybody can see you. Okay? It's becoming a sport. There, there's videos you can watch to learn how to win a debate. Well, if you're speaking truth, it, you should automatically win, right? No, 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 no. It's not about truth. It's not about whether you're right or wrong, but here's some ways to win whether you're right or wrong. Here's how to manipulate the people listening, but the debate between two people, to make them think you're right. It's a sport. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about winning. And in the end, when you actually look at it, nobody actually wins a debate. Unless the two people that disagree, one walks over here and shakes his hand and says, You're right, I'm wrong. Or this guy walks over and shakes his hand, Nope, you're right, I'm wrong. Nobody wins debates. When it's one on one, that's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to work things out when it comes to worldly thing, issues. You're supposed to be able to work things out, brother, sister, Christ. Work it out. Okay? But now let's turn to Romans, because this is the one side saying, hey, debate is okay. Yes, under the context that you're debating with a neighbor one-on-one, -on -one, and it's to solve a worldly problem, something worldly. Now this side that says debate is a sin, are they right? They're half right. But they forgot that context we just mentioned there. You are to debate your cause with your neighbor when you have a problem with somebody. Hey, you backed over my cat. We need to talk. Hey, you did this when it comes to worldly issues. Okay. Uh, your, your child came by and knocked my garbage can over. He does it every week, knocks my garbage cans over. And I have to clean it. You go debate your cause with your neighbor and try to fix things and iron things out. Okay. That's, so are we allowed to debate under that context, rightly dividing the word of truth? Absolutely. But what about Romans 128, or sorry, 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 29, and 2 Corinthians 12, 10, 20. What is this falling under? Because then you say, well, is the Bible contradicting itself? Let's see. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Let's go back to the New Testament. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Let's go up to 28. Let's start at 28. It is they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Remember this part. It's not talking about worldly issues. What's this talking about? Godly issues. Biblical issues. Spiritual issues. Okay. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient, not profitable. Right? They're not profitable, they're a waste of time, and they're going to hurt you in the end. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. That's all unrighteousness, the fornication, the wickedness, the covetousness, the maliciousness. Here it is, full of Envy, murder, these are all sinful, wicked things, unrighteous things, okay? Envy, murder, then we get to the word debate. 
See, this is where this side gets it saying, oh, debate is a sin. Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. This is all wickedness and sin. So why does it lead its debate under wickedness and sin? We'll get to it. I just want to go through this whole list so there's no... People are still going to argue. You're always going to have those people out there that will argue. But everything in here is negative. It's sin. It's wickedness. It's contrary to the way God wants us to live and be. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, sodomy. Implicable, unmerciful. And it's funny that I put that natural affection, I have to bring this point up, that now in a lot of Babel buildings out there, they're accepting sodomites and claiming they're born again, and they're still sodomites. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Sodomy is an abomination in the sight of God. If you're truly saved and born again, you're an ex-sodomite. You're not present tense a sodomite anymore. You give that up for the Lord. But these people, in their heads and everything, they've talked themselves, debating, they've talked themselves out of conviction. And they're doing things the wrong way. Unmerciful. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. You mean they're worthy of death for debating? It's under the list who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Like I said, a lot of people like watching debates because they, for entertainment. I'll be honest with you, I got caught up in some of that too, where I started watching some of the, the debates and going, oh yeah, you scored, oh yeah, you told them. But what does the, what does the Bible say? Cast that not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye pearls before swine, lest they turn around and rend you. Oh yeah. I got rended because it became a flesh issue, it became a pride issue. It became like a sport. And God had to teach me in the comment sections that when you're debating the Word of God, Knowing the judgment of God, the Word of God, this is where that debate comes in, where it's a sin. When it comes to the Word of God, we are to, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. We instruct one another in meekness, humbleness, but with authority and assurance, because we have the perfect written Word of God. Usually it ends there. When you, I'm telling you this right now, Brother Christ, when I start trying to instruct or have a conversation with someone who professes to be a Christian, and we start talking about God's Word, and I say King James Bible is God's perfect written Word, that usually ends it right there because they don't have a perfect authority. They don't want a perfect authority. They don't want God being the final authority in their life through His perfect written Word. They want to be their own authority. And when you realize that, you're done. When, I, when someone says, hey, the King James Bible is not the word, perfect written word of God, then we don't have the same foundation. There's no point in talking. There really isn't. You're going to waste your time. It's not convenient. But brother says Christ, even when you're talking with a brother or sister in Christ that you believe is saved, when you realize that the conversation's going from instructing one another to discussing the word of God with one another, trying to help one another, correction, instruction, Okay? When it starts turning to a debate, starts getting heated, starts becoming an argument, people are starting to get mad. That's when you guys say, okay, I'm done for right now. I gotta step back, I'm gonna take a break from this subject, we can come back to it later. Or you can get to the point where that brother or sister in Christ, they're not gonna listen. Let them alone. And this, I'm not talking about all across the board, they're blind leaders of the blind, but in the issue you're trying to reach them with, evidently, they don't want the truth at that point in time. Maybe in the future, we keep praying for them. We're planting seeds. Okay. 
but maybe they don't want the truth. So you have to say, hey, in that area, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. The blind lead the blind. They both will fall into the ditch. And maybe they'll take them falling into a ditch to open their eyes to the truth. That goes for lost people. That goes for saved people. Okay. If you jump down to chapter Romans 2, verse 2, it says, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things according to truth. What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. See, it goes back to the word, per perfect written word of God. It's what it's always going to come back to, brothers and Christ. When you have people trying to debate over the word of God, what does the Bible say? All scripture is given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine. When you have people that are wanting to debate over doctrine, that's a sin. We're to preach the truth, the doctrines that are found in this book under the Pauline epistles, the doctrines that are for today. And I've always taught this. You can, probably, you can find some doctrines that overlap. There's doctrine all throughout the Bible. But you need to realize what doctrine is for us today that we're supposed to believe in and stand for. Like looking for that blessed hope. The true plan of salvation. Right? Eternal security. These are just some that I'm throwing out there. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, right? all Scripture is given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine. We're not supposed to be debating over doctrine. For correction, we're not supposed to be debating over correction. How we correct, we're supposed to follow the Scriptures. For, uh, for, for correction, for, for all Scripture is given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay, very rarely, but there are still times that we debate, people try to get in debates over how we're supposed to rebuke, how we're supposed to correct, because some brethren aren't showing brotherly love when they correct someone, lost or saved. I mean, not lost is not brotherly, but love uh, in meekness, constructing those that impose themselves. Uh, when they're correcting the lost world in meekness, humbling yourself with authority, with ultimate authority, because we have the Word of God, hiding it in our hearts. But we do it in, in meekness, not in pride, not in ego, not in vengeance, not with bitterness, and I can keep going on and on. But we read here that links, I have it in my Bible where it links up to what's going on up there. It's talking about the Word of God. Are we allowed to debate this? No. We're to stand for this. The Bible says that we're supposed to be of the same mind and the same judgment, striving together. Is debating striving together, or is debating dividing and separating. I'm of this man, i got to root for him and, and get his banner and go, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. well, I'm of this guy, i got to root for him. I'm of this person. Yeah, that's what debating does. Debating divide, divides. That's why God puts it, I believe, under here into sin, because debating confuses people. Uh, those that are what the Bible calls um, simple, okay, when it talks about people that are simple, they're easier to deceive. What does simple mean? That you don't know this book like you should know this book. You might be newly saved and God's just getting you started. You might have been saved for 20 years and you still don't know this book like you should know this book. What are you considering according to the Bible? Simple. In other words, you're without knowledge. You don't, have, you don't know God's Word enough to be able to say when someone comes along and tries to deceive you to say, hey, that's a lie. You're deceiving. Well, I've got my book. It's gathering dust. Okay? But back to debate. There's two types of debating in the Bible. There's debating your cause with your neighbor when it comes to worldly issues. That is not a sin. If i got a problem with one of my neighbors, I can sit here and complain and whine, and then next thing you know it becomes gossip, uh, muttering under your breath. You start getting this hate and this bitterness that builds up. Or you can go talk to your neighbor and try to work things out. I'm not promising that it's going get, to get worked out, but at least you tried to do it God's way. I'm going to go talk to him. I'm going to go talk to him and try to work it out. Is that debating a sin? No. What becomes a sin, brother, says Christ, is when you take when you start getting into debates with brethren or getting into debates with lost people over the Word of God. 
And I'll say this right now, it had to be thrown right in my face and slapped me across the face to say, why are you debating, or debating the Word of God with lost people? They don't believe in it. This isn't their foundation. You don't have the same foundation. Talk about a waste. That's just a huge waste of time. And all it's ever going to do is turn around and rend you. Because you're casting that which is holy among the dogs and your pearls before swine. You're trying to give them wisdom that the Lord showed you when they don't believe in Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. They don't believe in God's perfect written word. And they reject it. Preach the gospel to them and move on. And I've had to do that. But I get into a discussion with someone who professes to be saved. And when it gets to the point where they don't, they finally admit that they don't believe the King James Bible is God's perfect written word. They, don't, they didn't get saved off the true plan of salvation. Repentance towards God. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Repentance is having godly sorrow for your personal sins. Your sins that put Jesus Christ up there on the cross. Not the sins of the world. Jesus didn't die for the sins of the world. Jesus died for those who would come to the cross. He died for those who would get saved coming to the cross. Now, I'm not talking about um, Calvinism, the elect. Anybody can get saved today. Anybody. But you come to the cross throwing your personal sins, your iniquities, at the foot of the cross. I didn't say clean up your life. I said you throw it at the foot of the cross saying, I am sinful and wicked. I did these things. And that's why Jesus Christ is on the cross. Because of my sins. Lord, I am so sorry. Why is that so hard for people? Brothers, it's Christ. Why is it so hard for people today? Because they want to come to the cross without being sorry. They want to come to the cross saying, Oh, Jesus just died for everyone's sin. He's paid, present tense, the, for the sins of the world and everything. And I just want to go to heaven, but I'm going to continue living how I want to live because I don't have sorrow for sin. Okay? When you come across somebody who you realize that they've believed in a false gospel, they're not Bible believers, let them alone. Preach the Bible version issue to them. They reject it. Preach the gospel to them. They reject it. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Now you said, why did you put it in that order? My testimony is, is I was a false convert most of my life, brothers of Christ. Jesus brought me to the Bible version issue when I was ready. When he said, okay, I believe you're ready now because God is, does miracles. He knows when people are broken at the right time. He knows how to hit me. He hit me up in my life at just the right time that I would listen. And I said, okay, Lord, what is this Bible version issue? And he taught me the Bible version issue. And I got a King James Bible. And then he taught me the true plan of salvation. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ at the cross. And I've never looked back since. This is God's perfect written word. And as soon as I started hiding this in my heart and believing that it's perfect, God changed my life and gave me a new life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't cast pearls before swine. Don't cast what that which is holy among the dogs. Don't get into debates when it comes to the Word of God. Okay? By all means, I'll say this. I said this with debating uh, uh, when it comes to the world issues. Go talk to them. Why is that so hard? If you have a disagreement, not a debate, but a disagreement with a brother or sister in Christ over the Word of God, or something that they're doing that you believe is contrary to the Word of God, you don't go into, oh, I'm going to go debate him. No. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You go to them with the Word of God. Uh, God. You go to them with brotherly love. You go to them with authority. Make sure you study the issue out for, th thoroughly before you go to them. And you correct them. If you have a problem with the brothers of Christ, you go and you talk to them. I can scream it to the top of my lungs, but a lot of people out there that are watching this that profess to be saved, and I believe some of you are, you just won't listen. No, it's easier just to kick them to the curb and treat them like they're nothing. Just treat them like garbage. Oh, but hey, I can find a loophole. I can say that they're lost. Therefore, if I say they're lost, then I don't have to do anything for them. Just kick them to the curb. Have you seen that happen lately? That's what all the brothers seem to do. I'll just treat them like they're lost and kick them to the curb. 
Brother, sister, Christ, you need to go talk to them. Even if in the end you feel like, okay, maybe they're a false convert, did you go talk to them about the Word of God? And when you realize you think they're a false, false convert, did you try to witness to them the true plan of salvation? No, I just kicked them to the curb like they're nothing. See, these people are okay with two men standing up there behind a podium, putting on a huge show, I'm debating this guy, I'm debating... They're okay with that, but they don't have the... And they think they'll act all courageous behind, you know, behind the monitor or the TV when they're watching, if they're sitting in the stands. Amen! They'll, they'll act like they have all this courage. But where's the courage to confront a brother or sister in Christ one-on-one? -on -one? With love. What happened to that courage? We seem to have a lot of cowards in the body of Christ these last days. If you've got a problem with a brother or sister in Christ, go talk to them. Email them. With me, brother or sister in Christ, you've got a problem with me, email me. I've talked to people who think I'm wrong with the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, which includes looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. The imminent return of Jesus Christ. He can come back any day now. We're supposed to live for Jesus Christ every day because we don't know when he's coming back. And the Bible teaches we're supposed to live as if he could come back today. Are you living for him? I had someone who disagreed with me. He was post him, And I talked with him. He claimed to be a King James Bible believer. He, he taught, told me he got saved off the true plan of salvation in the King James Bible. But I, I talked with him. Okay, I've talked with people that say, well, I kind of believe in eternal security. However, I can't seem to figure out these verses that make me think that you can lose your salvation. I did a, I did a whole series of studies on that. But I talk with them. The Godhead versus the Trinity. I've had brethren come and talk with me. Some of them stormed off in anger. Right? Some came back later and said, you know what, I'm sorry you were right. It was my pride and my... Falling in the trap of being a respecter of persons and trying to do things, the um, culture, traditions of men. You know where the Bible says the Pharisees held the traditions of men above the commandments of God. And he starts falling into that cult-like atmosphere where I've got to be part of this group and this group says the Trinity is okay. And I've had someone come back and apologize. There's some that still disagree with me. They believe in the true Godhead of the King James Bible, but they won't give up Trinity terms. I tried to help them. I tried to help them. But they've come and talked to me. But you have some that would rather talk about me behind my back, backbiting, whispering, uh, liberty, disagreeing with the brethren among li with liberty. Some people would rather talk about me behind my back, backbiting, whispering, bearing false witness, but they're too cowardly to come talk to me to my face with the Word of God. Let's do a Bible study. And I've done that with brethren on Skype. I'm pointing over here at my computer with Skype, where I spent hours talking to brethren about different subjects of the Bible that we seem to have some, a little bit we agree, but there's parts we disagree, and we try to work it out through the Scriptures. But like I said, if it looks like it's turning into a debate, someone's getting heated, you cut it off. We're not supposed to be debating this. This isn't up for debate. Like I said, brother says Christ, we'll find out. Anytime I have a disagreement with the brother in Christ, this is how I always try to word it, brother says Christ. We get together, let's say you and I, brother says Christ, get together to talk about something we disagree about. We're going to find out where the Bible's right and we're wrong. That's my whole heart. This is perfect. This is always right. This isn't always right. That isn't always right. I'm pointing at anybody who's watching. You're not always right. But this is always right. And this is what we're trying to be on the same page. This is what we're trying to make sure that we're both on the same, have the same foundation. So, brothers and sisters of Christ, stay away from debates when it comes to this, falling into the trap of debates. People will try to sucker you in. Well, why don't you debate this guy? Why don't you debate that? When it comes to world, uh, this? No. When it comes to worldly issues, it's supposed to be done one-on-one. -on -one. Not supposed to be video recording so the world can see it. You're supposed to be talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. The people that you have a problem with. I'm not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but the group that has the problem, that's who you're talking to. You're not putting on a show. Okay? So remember, brothers and sisters, we need to get back to this. The Word of God. We need to get back to doing things God's way. Is debate a sin? Well, it depends on rightly dividing the context. When it comes to the world, no. You debate thy cause with thy neighbor. 
when it comes to the truth, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. When it comes to the word of God, the doctrines, instruction and righteousness, how to rebuke, how to correct, this is enough for debate, brothers and sisters of Christ. Don't fall into that trap. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for your prayers. I Hopefully this new setup works up, works out, brothers and sisters Christ. I'm working on the guest bedroom in case any brothers or sisters in Christ want to come visit um, and fellowship. I'm trying to get things still. I still have that one room to take care of, but Lord bless me. Got a lot of this fixed up here. Uh, the walls repaired and... Uh, we're moving forward. We're going to keep living for the Lord. Like I said, this ministry is going to continue no matter what bumps we hit. Uh, I pray that you know I stay on the straight and narrow. I pray you stay on the straight and narrow. Please pray that I stay on the straight and narrow. Brother Sis Christ, that's what I mean by praying for me. And I thank you for the encouragements. I really do, Brother Sis Christ. I thank you for the emails. I thank you for the comments. And Lord, my, my heartfelt desire is I wish someday, I know someday we're going to meet. Someday, Brother Jesus Christ, we're going to meet. And we're going to be together in fellowship, face to face. Right now, my heartfelt desire is to see you, Brother Jesus Christ, face to face. To be able to fellowship with you face to face. But until then, I'm going to be praying for you. Please be praying for me. And I'll say it again. Grace and peace is what I want for you, Brother Jesus Christ. I don't want destruction, bitterness, hate. I want grace and peace for the body of Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.